Jack, how you doing, mate? Yo, Pete, I'm good, man. How are you? Good, man. Uh, Ed, nice to meet you. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Happy to be here. Good. Thanks for coming on my show. Uh, Jack's been uh, getting me pretty pumped about this for the last uh, week telling me all about the story but i don't know a lot about indie i'm going to try and come to the race i don't know a lot about the indie 500 i've been watching some today uh, it looks crazy it looks like you have to be slightly lunatic to want to drive those cars at those speeds can you tell me a bit about it oh uh, man where do you want me to start um i thought i figured you might be an f1 fan and maybe you've heard of the indy 500 but not necessarily as much about indycar but yeah i've I've wanted to be an IndyCar driver my whole life. I'm kind of an old man now in this game. I'm 40. Uh, I ran my first Indy 500 in 2004. Started racing long before that. Like most drivers, I started when I was I started when I was eight. Um, but yeah, so I started in 1989. Finally made it to IndyCar in 2004, which was my dream. I always just wanted to to make it to the Indy 500. Um, and now I think this will be number 18 for me, um, which is wild. And, you know, it's been the whole reason I wanted to get to IndyCar was to win the Indy 500. And I'm still chasing that dream. I finished second back in 2018. I've been the fastest qualifier three different times for the event. And I'm just still chasing that first win. It's such a, such a hard race to win. 500 mile races are, are difficult, but got a great team behind me. Um, which I happen to own, which is cool. I started my own team in 2012. Uh, so unique challenge relative to, to other drivers, but it's a, it's a fun, fun ride, fun ride. Love what I'm doing. Sometimes I question what I'm doing on the, on the hard days, but uh, it's all worth it. I do know a little bit about F1. Uh, one of my friends is Max Verstappen's race engineer. So I kind of had a little, oh, nice. yeah, a little bit of interest in, do you, I don't know if you know those teams, but uh, or if you know the race engineers, but um, I, I know some. You know, a guy that I used to work with is one of the Haas teams, aerodynamicist. I don't know that I know the guy you're talking about, but it's a pretty small world. There's people that that kind of travel across the pond working in both series, but as different as they are, there's a lot of similarities too. The main difference that it seems to me is that. Uh, in Formula One, uh, the track tends to have a lot more corners, which is slowing down for. Whereas when I was watching the Indy earlier, it seems like you're just racing as fast as shit for 500 miles, uh, <laughs> and the speed seems incredible. I watched some of the crashes; they're insane. Uh, it seems like you're gonna be pretty brave to live on that edge. Yeah, I mean that's one of the big things. You know, in F1, they race on permanent road courses, and now they have a few temporary street courses as well. I'm assuming when you're looking at IndyCar, you're looking at Indy 500 stuff. So we race on ovals, which is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But we also race on road courses and street courses like what you'd see more in Formula One. So it's just a, a bigger, more versatile schedule that we run on. But for sure, the speedway is as fast as it gets. You know, we'll be coming close to 250 miles an hour um, at the end of the straightaway there and qualifying. I don't know how to convert that to two kilometers for you i'm not not that good at math no we I use miles. my engineers for that no we use miles per hour. okay perfect then i get that i get perfect. that so how long and how long does a 500 mile race take well at indy it's two, 200 laps the track's two and a half miles um you know it can be anywhere from two and two hours three hours a lot of it just depends on how many caution laps are what the average speed of the race is but you know between two and three hours your typical indy 500 Sometimes there's a weather delay and it may take several days to, to get it in. Right. Okay. Well, listen, how did you get in touch with my boy, Jack Mallis here? Oh, it's, man, all this stuff has happened so quick and it's been so crazy, but a really good friend of mine here in Indy, actually, um, our, I knew him when we were kids and then we kind of reconnected as parents, both of our, our boys play hockey together and he's been just pumping me on Bitcoin for a couple of years now. And as we've gotten closer, you know, I, I talked to him just as friends do about my business and challenges and things that we're facing and hurdles we're trying to overcome. And 
um, one of my cars for the 500 didn't have a sponsor yet. And IndyCar, no different than Formula One or any any form of motorsport. It's all so sponsorship driven. Um, and he came up with this idea to try to figure out how to do something around Bitcoin. And, you know, over the time, you know, I had gotten involved personally and I don't even know if Jack knows this, but he essentially, he's a big follower of you, Peter and, and you, Jack, he had been before me, but he just guessed Jack's email to be fully transparent and, Jack being the amazing guy that he is responded a day later and uh, David, my friend David called me and he was practically shitting his pants. So excited with the the response he got from Jack. And we set up a phone call a couple of days later and, you know, from, from then to where we are now, every, every time we talk, I feel like there's a new idea and a, a something cooler to do than we already thought we were going to do. And it's been a lot of fun. I can't can't wait to can't wait for the world to see it and and to see the car on track and you know see see where this thing's fully going to go because I don't think any of us really know exactly what's going to happen. But it's but it's pretty wild. All right, Jack, you've got to tell your side now. Did you did you know that he guessed your email, Jack? Yeah, um, I I'll never forget that email. Uh, so just, I mean, a preface for all the listeners, I'm, I'm really fired up about this. So <laughs> I'm going to come in here with a lot of energy. Um, yeah, I got the email and I pinged, uh, strike our CBO, uh, Bob. And I said, Hey, uh, I just got hit up by, I think is, uh, Ed's a future hall of famer. I mean, this guy, <laughs> uh, I've never been super passionate about indie racing. I grew up playing uh, football, basketball, baseball. Um, but of course I know the Indy 500, um, it's one of America's pastimes. It's one of the biggest events in the United States every single year. Uh, and I pinged him as like, holy shit. I think that these guys are Bitcoiners. Um, and you know, some other contexts I've been getting contacted by NFL teams, NBA teams, uh, Euro league soccer players. And, uh, I pinged Bob and I said, I got an idea of how this is going to work. I'm going to schedule a call with these guys and just lay it all out on the line. And uh, we're not going to put like a little strike logo under his tire or anything. I'm a go big or go home kind of guy. Um, and yeah, we hopped on the phone and I'm happy to tell my version of it. But no, I'll never forget that email, Ed. I, I really won't, especially after what we've accomplished so far and what I think we're going to accomplish. That'll be something that I remember forever. Do you, do you remember what the email said? Was it just like a brief casual email? Was it a big thing? No, <laughs> it was it was like a novel. Uh, it was It was about... Um, from what I remember, and I can pull it up right now, but it was that, you know, COVID has been a weird year for sports, for every business. Um, and at the end of the day, Ed runs a business and it was kind of trying times, a weird year. No one knew how this event was going to go. If vaccines were going to be here before the event, if anyone was going to be in attendance, if sponsors were going to value the car the same way. Um, but at the end of the day, these guys were Bitcoiners. They're Bitcoin maximalists. Like Ed said, they're fans of mine. They're fans of a lot of us. Um, and you know, my, as soon as I read it, my take was Ed and these guys don't want to drive for potato chips. They don't want to drive for energy drinks. Um, and that they're Bitcoiners and that Bitcoin represents something bigger uh, and that they wanted to race for human freedoms. They wanted to race for financial literacy. They want to race for financial inclusion. They want to race for savings technology and financial opportunity and race for something bigger than themselves and exceed the profession of just driving a car and grow into a legacy that's ultimately pushing humanity forward. And it's the same thing I help these football players with or basketball or hockey or soccer, um, is that Ed wanted to put on for humanity, not put on for monster energy drink, not put on for Cheetos, not put on for, you know, good speed tires or whatever. Um, he wanted to race for, you know, the biggest project that humanity's got going for it. And that's Bitcoin. Bitcoin's ultimately hope it exceeds just tech. It's like a, it's like an attitude. It's a way to look at the world. And that was my perception of reading that email. And I was all in as soon as I was like, I got to talk to these guys because I know how big the Indy 500 is. And I know Ed's worked his entire life for this stage and for him to even entertain the idea of donating that stage and that car to the Bitcoin community. I was like, I can get the Bitcoin community to rally and get his back and we can put on a show for the world and we can win this race, whether we come in first place or not, we're going to 
you know, sponsor Bitcoin and, and, and show humanity what we're all about as a community. And that's what it was. And that's what I told him on the phone. So you heard the pitch, Ed? That, that's, pr- I mean, it's fairly accurate. I think that was maybe a summarization, sum- summarization of a, a couple phone calls merged into one. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, we were, the way the world is going now in, in sports, especially with everything that we've all had to deal with, over the past year plus now, you know, operating in what racing is, is still a very traditional model of sponsorship and branding. And it's, you see it in, in all sports with the few exceptions that are still somewhat immune to it, but even they feel it, you know, TV models are changing, how people consume entertainment are changing. And we're just like, we need to, we need to try to do something different. You know, we, we need to figure out a way to make sure our business is, is more sustainable long-term. And that's where this idea came from. And, you know, we were kind of at a tipping point. And, and like I said before, it all happened so fast. And, I, you know, that Jack was like, how are we going to do this? Am I going to commit my time? I've got a ton of things going on whole lot, whole lot of things to manage, you know, he's in El Salvador, he's all over the place, you know, building his own business. And I was like, look, I, you know, I, I believe in you. Uh, you know, I, I, I have trust in what we're going to do and we're going to do this. I'm committing, I'm committing one of my cars to this project and we're going to be in it together. And, you know, I think we're all super optimistic that, that it, as Jack always says, it's going to be historic. And, and along the way, we're going to have a ton of fun, but more importantly, you know, be making history for me doing something different in, in my sport relative to how other teams have, have solved this, you know, ever more complex riddle of, of funding a race team and, and finding, finding partners and, you know, pushing that in, into your world and being a, being a Bitcoiner, you know, bringing, bringing two passions into one um it's super exciting and like i said every time that that we have a call with jack or we're talking to bob at strike uh you know we come up with something different to add on to the program so you know we're sitting here today and i think if we do this podcast in another week we're probably going to have even more things to talk about because it's all happening so fast but you know i really can't wait to see where we end up from now until so we're all in Miami at the, the Bitcoin conference. You're coming to Miami? Uh, I think so. Sweet. I think, I think I'm going to be there. We've got some some stuff cooking that we're working on um, that I think will require my attendance, I hope. Nice. Well, I'm hoping to come to Indianapolis. I'm actually here in El Salvador with Jack. We're just in different rooms, so we could record this. Uh, <laughs> he's been so fucking pumped about this, like every day hearing about it. I'm pumped about it, dude. Okay, so just so people understand... Can you just talk a little bit to the challenges of running a race team? You say like how much sponsorship sponsorship drives it, but I've got no idea how expensive it is to run a race team. How many cars you have to have? Do you have to have a backup car in case you have a, like? How, how challenging is it? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's definitely challenging. You know, as, as I said earlier, you know, we're essentially a, a sponsorship funded sport you know we i with my team we have about 40 people we run two cars full time uh we'll actually have three cars competing at the indianapolis 500 um and you know we're we we have to raise you know to to comp- run with our team as we have over the past few years you know we're looking at having to raise you know 12 to 14 million dollars annually um through through partnerships, investments, business to business deals with partners we have, et cetera. Um, you know, I have I have two partners in the business. Uh, it's myself, my father, and another local guy in Indianapolis who's who supported us since we started the team. Um, you know, and it's when we started, we we had a a, a vodka company that partnered with us for a long time. Uh, they were with us for our first seven years of the team, and then that business went in a different direction and we have to pivot and find new ways. And, you know, especially in a year, like we just went through, it's even harder because, you know, everyone's kind of 
doesn't know what the next challenge is going to be. Don't know what the next curveball is going to be. Um, and we're just trying to find a, a different way to, to operate our business and, and be successful and be able to, to keep our people employed and, and ultimately, you know, go chase the dream of winning the Indy 500 for me personally. And, you know, this opportunity, you know, is a totally different and unique way to do that, that not only allows us to do something cool, but also allows us to, to promote Bitcoin, promote the Bitcoin network and empower, you know, people in, in your world to continue doing the great work that you all, you all are doing already. All right. So Jack, what, what is the structure of this? Like, what do people need to know? How do Bitcoiners get behind it? <laughs> How the fuck do we get a number one race car across the line with a Bitcoin logo on it? Yeah. Well, it's, so, car, it's car number 21, first of all, which is important. I right? mean, number one is in his yeah. comes first. Yeah, I know what you meant, but I just had to throw that out there. Well, is that, tw- is that oh, 21 no, just to a coincidence? all the details. Is that just a coincidence? Uh, yeah. One, one, so it, I drive car number 20, and when we were first talking, you know, I really, I really wanted to be the driver of the Bitcoin car. And Jack's like, we need to have car number 21 who's driven by, uh, another, another one of my drivers, Rena CK from the Netherlands. And so I had to, I had to kind of take one for the team and move, move some of our sponsorship around and move Rena's sponsors onto my car because it was, you know, I, I saw the importance of, of having, this program on the, on the car number 21, but it was a coincidence. We already compete with, with 21. Um, you know, just one of the many things that have happened that, that made this opportunity seem so perfect. Ed, none of this coincidence, man, this is written. You're going to win. Well, I believe that you're going to win the Indy 500 in the number 21 car racing for Bitcoin. I think, it feels like the only the only way that I the only way that I hope I can mess that up is there's only one person that I would be okay with beating the Bitcoin car and it's me. Uh, but either way, whether whether I win or the Bitcoin car wins, you know I win in both directions since they're both my cars. So that's amazing. It's amazing that it's car twenty one. All right, Jack. So listen, what's the structure of this? What are we going to do? What do we want from yeah. Bitcoiners? Yeah. So okay, I get on the phone with them. I get the email. And I schedule a call, I get on the phone, and I basically, I'm super forward with them. I'm like, listen, you guys are talking to the right guy. Um, I will die on this hill. I go to war for this asset class and for Bitcoiners my whole life. It's been my, my entire life I've, I've worked for this asset. And when the NFL sent me a cease and desist letter, when I helped Russell get his paycheck, I told him I ripped it apart. I told him to suck my dick. I, I got anyone's back that's willing to take the platform they've earned and promote Bitcoin, promote human freedom, promote financial inclusivity, promote savings technology. I'm all for it. So you guys, uh, what's your number? What do you got to hit? Um, because the first thing I told Ed is this is not going to be the strike car. This is not going to be the Coinbase car. Nobody wants to cheer for that shit. This is about Bitcoin and this is about the wider message that Bitcoin's hope right now in a really uncertain time for humanity. And he gave me his number of like, you know, this would be break even of fun in the car. And I told him, okay, here's the deal. And like, if you don't want to do it, you don't got to do it. You should call Coinbase. But here's how we get the Bitcoin community behind this. This is how we rally the world behind this. This is how we transcend racing. We transcend money. We transcend advertising. And we make history. Uh, First, I'm designing the car. Um, All this like legacy bullshit. All these cars look the same since like 1970. Um, this thing's going to look like fucking Batmobile. It's going to be hip. It's going to be futuristic. It's going to be like forward thinking. It's also going to be legacy. Like Bitcoin is the gold standard. It's the blue chip. So I'm designing not only the car, I'm designing the pit crew uniforms. I'm designing the umbrellas. I'm designing the bench. I'm designing everything. And it's all only Bitcoin. Fuck the strike car. This is the Bitcoin car. Um, second, the number you just gave me, those are rookie numbers. This community has made a ton of money. This community has memed a trillion dollar asset class from zero. Um, We can put up these numbers. So here's how it's going to work. 70% of all incoming money is going to go to open source Bitcoin development and privacy research around the asset class. 30% will then go to the car to make sure that Ed is break even at least and can fund his business and is not taking a loss for the sacrifice he's making on behalf of community, on behalf of Bitcoin, on behalf of humanity. 
And then once we get Ed funded, then of that 30% pool, he has Indianapolis local charities in mind, like Children's Hospital, that the capital will start to flow into. But I told him, I was like, here's here's the deal, man. We're either going to raise $0 and this is going to be a dud, or we're going to raise something like $10 million, And we're going to get the whole, like Bitcoin transcends borders, races, cultures. This is a global phenomenon that I don't give a fuck what walk of life you're from. You relate to, you view it as hope. It's a guiding light. It's like a lighthouse of the future of humanity. And we're going to do this the right way. No one's in this for money. No one's making a paycheck out of this. No one's buying a Lambo. This is supporting the open source developers that got us here, the open source developers that changed the world with nothing. And we're going to use this platform that Ed's got, and we're going to make the biggest Bitcoin event of all time. Um, This is pop culture meets cypherpunk. This is the event we've all been waiting for, you know, as plebs. And that's what I told him on the phone. It was like, if you're willing, if you got the cojones, this, I t- go tell your advertisers to fuck off this year. We got this one as a community. We can do it. And, you know, I think less than 24 hours, they're like, let's go. Let's go. And so now if we raise the $10 million, let's say, and, and I know $10 million is a crazy number. And, and everyone's like, God, you're crazy. I'm like, yeah, you're damn right. I'm fucking crazy. The same amount of crazy where Bitcoin you know, went from zero to a trillion dollar asset and changed the world. That's the type of crazy. You, sometimes you just got to be crazy enough to think you can, and that's all it takes to do it. And so let's say we do put up a number like 10 million. We'd have $7 million to fund Bitcoin open source development, privacy research, scaling research. Ed would be funding his car, and then we'd bleed a bunch of capital into charitable efforts like Children's Hospital. That'd be the biggest thing that could ever happen to this asset class, the biggest stage. So to all the Geminis, all the Coinbases, Krakens, block streams, what are you waiting for? I mean, Bitcoin's at all-time highs. We're doing so well. Um, this is our time to put on and promote Bitcoin awareness as a car at the Indy 500 and then support the Bitcoin open source developers that put all you guys into retirement, that got your business to the billion-dollar valuations, got you public. Let's get back to our roots take pride in this shit. And uh, yeah, I told Ed, I got his back. I got your back. I will die for this project. I'll die for Bitcoin. And so I'm fired up. That's what it's all about. That was the story right there. <laughs> you, you didn't even mention that we're racing against a PNC bank car, a fifth third car. So yep. you know, there's there's so many things happening that's just going to make the, the story he, and the journey that much yeah. more fun. <laughs> he tells me, so I got pressure. So he's like, what car do you want? You want both cars? You got do you want half of one? He's like, all right, well, what cars? He's like, oh, I got the car number 20, car number 21. I said, tell whoever wants to advertise on car number 21, tell them we don't need them. Tell them kiss, kick rocks, kiss ass, goodbye. Uh, and he's like, all right. And then, you know, just so you know, there's a PNC bank car. There's this bank, this bank. It was like, all right. I turned around and within 24 hours. I had a, a, it looks like the car looks like a Batmobile. It's the coolest fucking thing. It's going to stand next to these legacy bankers. And uh, we got the car number 21. You can't write a script better than this. And this is the biggest stage in America. I mean, the only thing that could top this is if someone in the Super Bowl wanted to wear a Bitcoin jersey. I mean, this is it, man. Like the, To all the plebs out there, we memed this thing to re- existence. Let's support our Bitcoin core developers. Let's support our privacy research. Um, and let's support Bitcoin awareness and human freedoms and uh, show the world what this community is all about, man. Well, firstly, Jack Mallers, I fucking love you. Uh, secondly, Ed, who the fuck is this kid? Listen to him. I bet I'm surprised he didn't turn around to you and say, oh, and I'm fucking driving that car and I'm winning the race. Oh, I would have had to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, I've been thinking about all this, you know, I've, I've been as excited as him, but the number one I've been thinking about just since we've been on this call, since he said it is, what was the NFL's response when you gave them <laughs> gave them your response? But we don't we don't need to go into that. But uh, no, it's it, it's unreal. You know, it's the fact that Jack took the time and and took us serious in in our initial email to him. Um, you know, it blew me away, and the the amount of energy and focus that that he's putting into this, and you know. I already believed in everything, but, you know, his, his passion is so infectious. Um, and it's, you know, it's an honor for me to, to be a part of it and, you know, to be, to be working with this guy now. It's, so this, this must feel very different from, actually, let me ask you another question. Is this for one race or for a season? 
Uh, well, so the, it's for the Indy 500 is, is what we're looking at, but you know, with, with everything we've been talking about, you know, we don't know, we don't know how big this is going to be. Mm. And, you know, if, if we get, if we can reach some of these goals that we're talking about, which seem crazy, but, you know, on the other hand, don't seem that crazy. You know, I, it's something that, that I'm prepared to carry on. Um, you know, because if, if we blow this thing out of the water and, and the community gets as excited about it as we are, um, you know, why, why would we, why would we want to stop? But, you know, the, the focus is Indy 500. Um, we're, we're going to start there after that. Who knows, who knows where, where we're going to go or what we're going to do. You know, it, it, it's evolved so quickly from that first email to now. Um, who knows? Yeah, Pete, I, just a quick update on that though. So, uh, I haven't been able to really market this cause it's been a secret. It, a lot has happened so fast. It was kind of unclear, but in the short few days that I've been able to make a few phone calls, we already have a million bucks pledged. And Ed's number he gave to me was, Hey, if we get like, you know, half a million dollars to fund the car something like that, you know, I should be able to break even on the Indy 500. Um, and so if you do the half a million, he's, you know, 30%. So, you know, we're talking about 1.5, 2 million, 3 million bucks should cover Ed and his sacrifice for what he's doing for the Bitcoin community. And so I remember telling him on the phone, those are rookie numbers. I know this community so well. This community is responsible for bringing the biggest change to humanity since I've been alive, since a lot of us have been alive. And so fuck that. And so we're already almost there. Um, but if we can post some big numbers, and I know all the businesses, this is your chance to support Bitcoin development, support the open source community, support the ground roots and nucleus that got us all into the position we are today. This is it. And this is a guy that has the biggest stage in America. He's willing to promote and sacrifice for that. Um, I think we can post bigger numbers. And then if we do, Ed's just going to continue racing the Bitcoin car. Um, and I think we could show up PNC Bank and all these fucking assholes. So, um, anyways, that's the progress progress update. And this announcement will come out the twelfth, which is Wednesday. So will this podcast. And uh, I'm going to go after everyone in the community that I think needs to support Bitcoin development and support Bitcoin awareness at the Indy 500. And I think we could post some huge numbers and keep this thing going long past the Indy 500, in my opinion. Ed, how is this different for you though? Like as a team, obviously. Uh, you must be pumped to be working with Jack and on this. I am. I'm pumped. I don't. I know nothing about Indy 500. Now I'm excited. Obviously, I I care about this, but like it, it must be a very different way to approach this. Yeah, it totally is. And you know, it it's it's been you know there's a certain level of risk from my end because we're we're choosing to do it a different way and break the norms. And even for me, with with my own business partners and Ed Carpenter Racing. You know, one of them is my dad and, and, and our other partner, you know, my dad, they're both around 60 years old. Neither of them really know much about Bitcoin at all. So I had essentially committed ourselves to do this. And then I had to turn around and, and sell them on, on why it was a good idea and how it was going to be successful. Um, and, and my partner, Stuart, you know, I sent him, I sent him as, as much research as I could get quickly that I felt like would, would he would understand, send him some videos of Jack speaking, a couple podcasts. And he, he has some two boys that are younger and he's like, man, they've been, they've been bugging me about this for a while now. Like, so it woke him up to start doing research and, you know, he's an old school, old fashioned guy. And just through this process, he's now getting educated and getting super excited about it. He was at the office the other day and he's, he's talking to me about the lightning network and I'm like, well, well, man, you've like really been digging in from, from going from nothing to now. Um, you know, so it, and that's exciting, you know, then that's, that's part of why we're doing this is to, to take it mainstream. And, you know, when, when we run the Indy 500, uh, at the end of May Memorial weekend, you know, it's, it's going to be the largest sporting event that's taken place since the pandemic started. There's going to be 140,000 people there in attendance, let alone, the millions watching around the world and, and to, to be able to have a Bitcoin car on track and to be able to use our platform to tell that story. It's amazing. You know, the fact that I've been able to, to get my partner who knew, knew nothing excited about this and on board with it and seeing the potential, 
you know, just after a couple conversations, that's what it's all about. You know, it's, 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 it's one thing to have everyone excited about it that gets it, but then to, to bring new people into the fold that will now understand it from, from this, from this concept and email that started it all. It's wild. Jack. It's great. Jack, one of the interesting things that's going on here is uh, Bitcoin was built by cypherpunks and nerds and geeks and up in their bedrooms, hidden away. No one took them seriously to begin with. Uh, it's been uh, defended by maximalists and plebs and hardcore Bitcoiners. But there is this thing, and I'm seeing it hanging around with you this last week. Like Bitcoin is crossing into pop culture, into sports. It's becoming it's becoming part of the the kind of mainstream now, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah, of course it is. Um, I think it's fascinating, and I think it carries a much deeper meaning. Um, not to get all philosophical on everybody, but I think as a human being. Uh, you ultimately want two things inherently by being alive. You want to be a part of something bigger than yourself and you want to work towards something that's going to last longer than you will. I think fundamentally, if you could do those two things as a human, you'll live an amazing life. And being part of something bigger than yourself could be a marriage, could be building your own family, it could be building your own company, it could be working for someone else, something that exceeds just you as an individual and then working towards something that's going to be here when you die. And that's leaving a legacy and that's leaving a footprint on the world and pushing humanity forward and what you hope is the right direction. And everyone has various opinions on that. And what I think Bitcoin has become is it's exceeded a piece of tech. It's exceeded, you know, a cypherpunk hackathon project. It's exceeded a hedge against inflation. Bitcoin is a cultural phenomenon. Uh, Bitcoin is an attitude. Bitcoin is a belief system. Bitcoin is a way to look at the world and a way to contribute to humanity in just a little way. Right. Like Ed doesn't consider himself Satoshi. Ed doesn't think he's doing more for Bitcoin than what Bitcoin can do for him. And no one can say that. No one can say they can do more for Bitcoin than what Bitcoin can do for them. And that's the beautiful thing about it. And so whether you're in the NFL, whether you're in the Premier League, whether you're a Hollywood actor, whether you're a singer on the billboard charts or whether you're an indie driver, this is a way to exceed your profession and be part of something that's going to be here when you die. And something that's going to push humanity forward, something your kids will use and their kids will use. And I think it's amazing. And I think it's amazing. And I'm just humbled to play that role where people can call me and know that I'm going to go to war for them and I got their back. Um, and finding a way to bridge pop culture and sports uh, and acting and music and the cypherpunk ethos and cypherpunks write code and getting these open source developers funded. Um so that's what this is all about, and I think it's beautiful, man. Bitcoin is hope. Well, Bitcoin we sh- is hope. We should cover that just a bit more, Jack, because uh, there may be some people who will check this episode out who haven't heard the podcast before. Maybe they're not Bitcoiners. Uh, maybe Ed, Ed sends some people our way to listen to this who maybe are just people are fans of uh, IndyCar driving. Uh, when you talk about Bitcoin and human freedom and supporting open source devs, that might be a whole new world. You should probably just give a little bit of an explanation of that and why it's so important. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the coolest properties of Bitcoin is that it's not uh, run by any central party. Um, it's not governed by any central party. Uh, there's an inability to change the rule set, to pause it, to freeze it, um, to do anything to it. Bitcoin simply exists. Uh, and as soon as the code was deployed, the monetary policy was set in stone and the network network operates in compatibility t- to 10 years ago than it does today. And, and that's a, a beautiful thing. Um, it's, a, it's a network that's inherently global. Uh, it's a network that runs 24-7. Um, and so it's the first monetary network that has such openness. Um, and it is uh, it acts on behalf of the individual. Uh, as opposed to to the state or to the corporation. And so what you're seeing is, you know, a story I like to tell is here in El Salvador, Bitcoin hodlers here, they make the same percent gains when Bitcoin has a 10% rally as Michael Saylor, this billionaire man, right? Um, They scan the same QR codes as everyone else. This is about human freedom, financial opportunity, financial inclusivity. This is a technology that gives humanity something to look forward to and something to strive towards. Uh, and so, you know, we had the 2008 financial crisis and who knows what we're in for now with COVID and all the stimulus checks and the M2 supply is going crazy and people are rallying behind a technology that they know they can trust, uh, and they know that they can believe in and rely on. And it's backed by people that care 
And uh, sometimes all it takes to change the world is just care enough. And that's how I think about the Bitcoin community is we wear hoodies, we're weird, we're nerdy, we don't have girlfriends, all of the memes. But you know what you can't say is that these guys don't fucking care. We care a lot and we care enough to think that we can engineer a new economic system that we don't have to rely on anyone but our own node. And we, we're that crazy and we care that much to risk our life for all of that. That's what that's all about. But talk and, about uh, the open yeah. source devs though as well, Jack, because this is what we also want to raise money for. Yep. Yeah, so Bitcoin's an open source project. Um, the actual source code, the implementation of the Bitcoin protocol, you can go find it on the internet. Just Google it. It's free to download. And the people that write code, there are no rules. There's no Bitcoin company. There's no Bitcoin CEO. People that contribute to this project are you know, far and in between kids, adults, men, women, uh, different religions, different races, different countries. And uh, open source software um, is critical and underpins every function of everyone's life, no matter what you use, the internet, Bitcoin, your phone. Um, all built on open source technology. And so in my opinion, you're seeing, you know, Coinbase boast these crazy valuations. Every, you know, BitGo sold for a billion dollars. A lot of us have made a lot of money in this industry and there's been a lot of change in the world. Um, but at the core nucleus, this is just an open source software project at the end of the day, plain vanilla. And we need to support the people that are writing the code and we need to support, you know, there's no commercial interest in this project. Strike, strike. I'm not making a fucking dime. None of this money is going towards what I'm doing. This is about pushing Bitcoin forward and ensuring that now we have a trillion dollar asset class that a lot of corporations, a lot of businesses, a lot of individuals are relying for to protect their purchasing power, to save wealth, protect wealth, um, hedge against inflation. Uh, countries interested in looking at it as a reserve asset. I mean, we need to support um, the people that are doing the research to ensure this thing's going to be around for the next century. And that's what that's about. Ed, what's the timetable now? What are we looking at? Yeah, so like I said, this thing came together at lightning speed, but the car came out of paint on yesterday, Friday, the 7th. Um, not that, I hope I'm not messing up the podcast by talking days, but um, I tried FaceTime and Jack yesterday to show him real time the thing coming out of the paint booth. But literally, we we designed the thing brought it to life, painted it. The guys will be building the car on Monday. We'll move everything over to the Speedway on Thursday. Uh, We have a race next weekend on the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And then the Bitcoin will be on track uh, Tuesday, May 7th. So, you know, this this whole thing went from an idea to to reality really in about three weeks. And what do you think of the... It all just came together so fast. Go check. No, we I, just to color in for the Bitcoin community, uh, we're going to do press release and uh, announcements and everything May 12th. Uh, and that's when I'm going to get real public with, you know, hey, I got a list sitting right in front of me. Uh, I don't know. OK, Coin, Bitfinex, Kraken, Coinbase, Gemini, uh, MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor, people that rely on this asset class for their careers, for their quality of life. You know, it's time to, you know you know, chest bump, time to show up, uh, show up to the plate, um, and support a guy who sacrificed his car for the biggest stage that he's worked his whole life for and rally behind him as a Bitcoiner and, uh, promote Bitcoin awareness and Bitcoin open source development. So that, that, uh, train starts May 12th and the race is May 30th. And Pete, by the way, the race is that, you know, we're not just going to go show up and watch these guys drive. Um, we're showing up like the bosses that we are as a Bitcoin community. Uh, I'm getting helicoptered in wearing a fucking full Bitcoin suit. I'm taking a photo shoot with the Bitcoin umbrella and my boxers holding a Budweiser heavy. Um, and so any big donors or any Bitcoiners that want to come to the race with me, um, show up for this asset class, show up for the way we view the world. Um, there's a Bitcoin QR code on the car. Um, And so you can pause your TV at any point and scan the QR code and donate to the car in real time. This is full on Bitcoin maximalists leave nothing behind. Um, And so we start the 12th and then we got two and a half weeks to fund this thing um, and really get some energy behind it and and show the world what we're all about. May 30th is our day. So I got you back. Uh, I'm going to take out the ads on the show when we release this one. We'll just do an ad fully for this and that we'll do that uh, mid-roll and pre-roll. So we'll just focus on 
trying to help you raise the money for this. And I'll pester a few people uh, as well, Jack and Ed, and we'll do your best, uh, <laughs> my little small part of the world. But I think Jack will hammer down the doors well himself for this. But Ed, uh, a, a good place to leave us, a uh, good place to finish on is like, how much of a chance have we got to win? Well, I say we, how much of a chance have you got to win in this and getting that car of the line first place? I feel, I feel confident always. You know, my team has performed so well at Indy. Um, you know, I think we've had, I've had three poles. We've had a car on the front row, meaning top three qualifier six times out of the past, like seven or eight years. Um, Linus VK that'll be driving the Bitcoin car. He was rookie of the year last year in the race. Um, was, was the fastest Chevrolet qualified driver where Chevrolet powered team. Um, and, and he's a stud. He's great at, great at that track. Um, I've led the most laps, finished second. You know, it, it's a place that we excel. My team, my team thrives on. Um, you know, so I, I, I like to think our odds are pretty good, but especially having the, the power of the Bitcoin community behind us, you know, it's going to motivate us that much more to go out and, and deliver on our end of this program. Uh, just like Jack is making us all believe that the community is going to deliver on their end to fund, to fund this project and to fund open source development. So I, I feel great. You know, I can't wait to get on the track. I'm ready. I know Renus is ready. Uh, the car looks great, and it's going to be fast. I can't wait to get into Indy myself and see this. This uh, I think uh, I don't know what I'm going to be more pumped about, just like with Jack going wild uh, beforehand or watching the race itself. I think both will be uh, thrilling to watch. Jack, you, you got to finish it out, man. You're pumped. No, I just... I just say, listen to the community, to the you know Brian Armstrongs, the Jesse Powells, the Michael Sailors, the Sam Bankman Freeds, everyone and all in between. Donate a fucking dollar if you if that's all you got. But um, what has Bitcoin done for you? This is a perfect opportunity that Ed is you know really. I'm so thankful for what he's doing for the community, um, and it's an event. Uh, it's your best excuse to support Bitcoin development. It's your best excuse to support Bitcoin awareness. It's going to be all over ESPN, Sports Center. It's nationally televised. And think about it. Every million dollars that comes in, that's $700,000 that's going to go to supporting Bitcoin development, supporting privacy research, supporting CoinJoin, supporting research on top of Lightning. Uh, and then we're also going to get money to Children's Hospital. Um, this is our chance as a community to show out, show what we're all about. Um, and all, to all the plebs out there, Hold these companies accountable, man. I mean, we're all here. Some of these people got put into retirement, companies going public, talking about building generational wealth on the back of open source tech. And it's great and it's a beautiful thing. Um, but let's give back. Let's support these guys. These guys are modern day heroes um, that hide behind these anonymous GitHub usernames. Um, and I would love to take this opportunity and support them. So this is my, you know, I'm, I'm putting my name on the line here. Um, I need the community to rally. We're at all-time highs. Um, we, we, we really should show out as an asset class, as a community, as cypherpunks, um, and support Bitcoin awareness uh, and open source technology. Let's do it. Do we know where we're sending them to to make the donations yet? Yeah. So Ed will have a strike account for all Lightning donations and smaller donations. We'll have a public Bitcoin address. Uh, and then if you would like to make an outsized donation via wire or something like that, um, you can reach out to me at jack at strike.me. Uh, and we're facilitating it all. We have a charitable uh, entity that we spun up. Uh, and so I'm going to be push publishing all of this in my own blog post and in the press release. It will not be hard um, to find out where to donate the money to. And and all, also, by the way, there'll be all this, you know, 8,500 Bitcoin gear that Ed and his team are going to be listing on their shop. Um, we have some partnerships that I don't want to announce quite yet on the podcast, but will be announced in the coming weeks of uh, really limited edition stuff. And we'll have the Bitcoin car, the actual Indy 500 Bitcoin car at Bitcoin 2021. And at Bitcoin 2021, which is the week following the race, we'll announce where all of the capital is going. Um, and I hope that I'll have millions of dollars. I um, mean, I'm working with Alex Gladstein, the Human Rights Foundation, MIT, Square Crypto. We're working with all the right people to ensure that all the best open source development, privacy research, and things that are supporting uh, the Bitcoin network and the Bitcoin community get funded. I hope we got millions of dollars to give out and hand out at Bitcoin 2021 on the back half of this. 
Great. Nice one, Jack. Well, listen, look, I will put all of that in the show notes. Anyone listening, all the links will be in the show notes. Make sure you check them out. Make sure you support this. Ed, I wish you the best, man. I fucking hope you win. I'll be there cheering you on. Um, I hope we will get to just like jump around like you see at the end of the race because it's uh, the Bitcoin car has gone over the gone over the uh, uh, the finish line in first place. Uh, I'm really grateful, Jack, for you um, asking me to do this and it's great to meet you here, Ed, and just all the best, uh, both of you, and uh, fingers crossed uh, we have a winner here. Yeah, thanks for having me and uh, see you both in a couple of weeks and we're going to have a hell of a good time. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. And plebs, Bitcoin community, let's fucking go. It's what it's all about. We meme shit to existence. It's our time. Here we go, baby. 